Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. Uh, I think it was last March, I had a user donate to me a, um, a Burke number no. 4 milling machine. And this is the machine right here. And in addition to this, he, uh, he gave me a, uh, a Logan lathe. Uh, I think it's a 10 inch, 9 or 10 inch Logan lathe. Um, it's still uh, in storage and I think that's something that my son's going to work on. But that's not what this video is about. So uh, this machine he gave to me and it was mostly in pieces, right? So I just sort of have it loosely put together so you can get an idea what it looks like and we'll do a, a, a walk around. But in a nutshell, um, it's got a, uh, I think it's a 16 inch travel on the table, 12 or 16 inches uh, X travel, about three inches Y and about seven inches in the Z or Z axis. <clears throat> Overarm support. Um, Auto feed, although you can't really kind of tell it here. Uh, the worm gear is is right here for it. Uh, the uh, shaft, of course, is the gearbox cover and and that sort of thing. So uh, I got most of the machine. I think I am missing a couple of bits, <clears throat> which would be the um, um, obviously I need belts, but I'm missing the uh, pulley uh, that should go on the motor. And, um, of course, I'll need some tooling. You know, I'm, I don't have a, an arbor. I need to make an arbor one inch and maybe seven eighths arbor. And then this has a brown and sharp number nine taper. So um, my intentions are to build a, a bench for this machine, uh, take it apart, strip it, and clean it. Uh, I do have a couple of odd things that I want to talk about this on this machine when we get there. But I want to give a walk around, show you what I have, and. And uh, the other thing that I'm missing is that there's where these three bolts are here, there should be a cover here where the uh, drum switch would go. I did see one of those on eBay, but man, they won like $60 for it. So that might be a good exercise in, um, you know, ramming up and making a casting of my own or something. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but it does have auto feed. It's got table stops. <clears throat> um, this, uh, this pulley here. Is driven off of the um, uh, the main uh, the main shaft, which drives the uh, which drives the uh, auto feed. Uh, I think tension is held onto it with a spring. I'm not real sure. Uh, I do have, fortunately, I do have um, uh, a lot of documentation for it with uh, exploded drawings and stuff like that. But now I will say this: <clears throat> if any of you guys are familiar with this machine uh, and can offer some assistance or some help, that would be great. Uh, like I said, this is a Burke number no. four. It's a B-100-4 um, <clears throat> bench top, or I think they actually sold this here with a cast iron base, and I think complete would weigh about 450 pounds. You're seeing about, uh, about 200 pounds of it up here. So uh, the first thing I wanna do is make a bench for it, and uh, then we're gonna strip it apart, paint it, and that sort of stuff. But anyway, this is an introductory video. I just wanna see what, you, uh, what I had here, show you what I had here to work with. And uh, so we'll take a little tour here and show you what I have, what I don't have. And I got a question about, well, I'll call them a gib for lack of a better word, but they're not a gib in the traditional sense as I understand them, uh, you know, as a tapered or straight gib like you'd see in a lathe or most milling machines. So let me get the uh, camera set up here and <clears throat> um, we'll walk around and, and show you what we got. Okay, so I thought I'd give some general dimensions of the machine. The uh, chip tray at the bottom is uh, about 20 and a half inches deep and about 13 and a half, 14 inches wide. The machine overall height is, uh, looks to be about 26 inches. Um, like I said, there's three inches of travel uh, in the Y axis on the machine. I think there's 12 or 16 inches of travel in the, uh, in the X axis. The table itself is 16 inches long. Uh, three and three quarter inches wide has a single T slot down the middle. Let's see what else can I say. Um, three step pulley. This looks like a number B. I'm not sure. Uh, pulley here to drive the spindle. Uh, overarm support. Uh, this pulley, like I said, drives the auto feed. Um, <clears throat> as far as I can tell, all the auto feed stuff is here. And then let's go around here and we'll look at the other side. Okay, we're over here on the other side of the machine. Uh, the lead screw uh, for the X-axis gets bolt bolted to the saddle. 
Uh, this comes through, I believe, this way to feed the table back and forth. Has a, a, a couple collars here, and then of course the handle. Uh, on the back side of the machine, hopefully you can see here, there's a casting here. This gets bolted to the back side of the machine right here. Uh, that would clamp down on, I guess we'll call it maybe the motor shaft for lack of a better word. The motor shaft, if we can see it here, will slide into that casting back here and then the motor of course mounts onto here and then the pulley drives here and then this will slide uh, back and forth in this casting right here to allow you to select the, uh, uh, the pulley. Now, having said that, I don't um, know what size belt originally went on the uh, motor that went on it and the motor that originally went on it was a gearhead motor which I don't have. The motor I do have is this one here I have tested it it does run I think it's a horse and a half uh, 110 volt um, 5 8 shaft um, uh, sounds like it needs um, you hear that sounds like it needs bearing so that's uh that's what I got to drive it with unless I can find something else so I'm looking for uh, maybe a, a different motor to mount to it uh, I will need to find a, a pulley that will match this and I'm not sure what size pulleys this is. Maybe somebody can help me here. This pulley has an outer slot of, well, let's see here. So it looks like it's 5 8 wide. So is that a, uh, is that a B pulley? Is that what it is? An A is like a 4 8 or a half inch and a B pulley is 5 8 if somebody can let me know. Um, so that's what we got here. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to talk about is um, these crazy gibs, for lack of a better word. And maybe I can get the camera in here. I'll take some stuff off so we can see. And uh, I'll bring you right back in. Okay, if we look here, we have the dovetail of the column slide and a slight dovetail of the uh, knee casting and inside it's hard to tell but there's a there's a wedge piece but it's not really a gib although you adjust it with these screws and there's there's three of them two I think are supposed to be intended for adjustment and one is probably intended to be a lock although I'm not real sure so as we come back here to the knee and hopefully I don't shake you up too much the cross slide, right, for the saddle, or I guess you'll see that, maybe you can see here, you see it has two studs, right? And of course this would slide on, slide on like that. And then there's another one of these trapezoidal pieces that connect it. So this is the piece here that gets bolted up under here on these two studs and locks it in. And if we look, we see that there's two different angles, right? This one has been drilled on, is quite mangled, and has a weld. So I think at a minimum, this piece needs to be remade. I will try to get some angular measurements off of this. I'm kind of curious if anybody can make this piece for me. This piece here, Let's see here. It's about four and three eighths long, roughly. Uh, the base is about three quarter. The top is about, now let's see here. It's about seven sixteenths inch wide. And like I said, there are two angles and I'll try to figure these out. So um, this one, if you, Put, install it and tighten it all the way up. It does not take all the play out of the saddle. There's still a little play. So this one is not doing what's supposed to do. So I'm going to look into it a little bit more and get some of it cleaned up. So I guess one of my preliminary things here is, is there anybody out there who can make me 
a, a gib. I, I, I don't know what else to call it, guys, a gib. It's, uh, it's a little different. It has two bolts that hold it up from underneath, and as you tighten those, um, that wedges up against there and, and makes this, you know, prevents this from moving. So anyway, that's where, what we got. So the machine is uh, quite dirty and uh, needs, to be, um, needs to be taken apart, degreased, stripped, and painted. That's what I intend to do with this one here. So I know I, I know I didn't do that with my lathe, so I thought maybe I would do a better job with this one. Um, and I need to make a uh, bench for it. So the first thing I'll do is make a bench and I probably won't uh, belabor you guys with a whole bunch of the stripping, cleaning, and that sort of thing. Um, maybe videos of, of it going together. So you tell me what you're interested in and, and uh, go from there. So let me reposition the camera and show you uh, another thing that I'm missing. And, uh, and uh, hopefully maybe I can find these parts. Uh, this latter part probably doesn't really matter to me. But let me get the camera back in position where it needs to go. Okay, so on this side of the machine is a, an elongated uh, shield, you know, to cover the belt. So it has four screw holes, the best I can tell. I don't have that. I don't have the guard that goes on the other side that uh, measures, I mean, I'm sorry, that uh, <clears throat> covers the uh, pulley from that side and that the uh, on-off switch would mount to. I think I have everything else, but we'll... we'll We'll uh, go along and, and, and see what we have. So I just got a couple things that I want to say in closing and we'll go from there. Okay guys, I know that's not a real great introductory video. Of course, I'm not, a, I'm not very good at that stuff anyway. So you pretty much see what I have. It's a uh, small benchtop horizontal milling machine uh, that was donated by a user that I'm very, very grateful to have because it's the only milling machine I got and I sure would like to see it run. Uh, the uh, spindle is a brown and sharp number nine. Um, I do have one lonely collet for it uh, and a drawbar. Probably will have to make another drawbar because I think it's really designed for, um, you know, the, the uh, arbor that holds the one inch color, uh, cutters. I typically have uh, one inch and uh, seven eighths inch uh, cutters, I think is what uh, uh, are normally on this machine, um, or at least that's the arbor sizes that I've seen. So I'd be interested in some inexpensive tooling if I can find some. Um, let, let me know, you know. Um, I think that I seen at CD Co or somewhere I seen um, Brown and Sharp number nine collets. So uh, that's probably the first thing I'm gonna start with. If uh, anybody out there could uh, assist me or help me with uh, this crazy, I'm gonna call it a gib, guys. Uh, uh, for you more experienced folks out there, I mean, this. This is what it is, right? Uh, Gib, uh, it's just not like anything I've ever seen. It does have two different angles on it. Uh, it's trapezoidal in shape, about three and a half inches long. There's one both for the Z and the uh, Y axis. Now the X axis has a normal, regular straight uh, Gib uh, on it. So that's that's kind of what you know I would expect. So uh, Tell me what you think. I mean, you think this is going to be a, a, a should I document this and, and put it out there for everybody to see? Uh, kind of like I did the lathe. Uh, should I just uh, only do highlights or, or what? If you have ideas on uh, how to get replacement parts, where to get replacement parts, or more importantly, tooling, um, let me know. So other than that, hey guys, is, like I said, this is an introductory video. The next thing I'll probably be doing is uh, uh, building a bench for this here uh, to go on to be bolted to. Um, something a little more sturdy than the saw horses and the uh, inch and a half thick solid door that I have sitting across it got it sitting on. So that's the next step and then uh, stripping it down, degreasing, uh, stripping paint, priming and repainting and that sort of stuff. So uh, if this sort of stuff interests you, uh, please consider liking, subscribing and sharing. Um, tell your friends and other than that, um, have a blessed day. <laughs>